Sahih Muslim, The Book of Sacrifices, Chapter on The Time for Sacrifice. Jundab bin Sufyan said, I was present at Eid al-Adha with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and no sooner had he finished his prayer and said the salam, but he saw the meat of some sacrifices that had been slaughtered before he had finished his prayer. He said, Whoever offered his sacrifice before the prayer or before we prayed, let him offer another one in its stead. And whoever did not yet offer his sacrifice, let him offer it in the name of Allah. It was narrated that Jundab bin Sufyan said, I was present at Eid al-Adha with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. And when he had finished leading the people in prayer, he looked towards some sheep that had been slaughtered and said, Whoever slaughtered his sacrifice before the prayer, let him slaughter a sheep in its stead. And whoever has not yet slaughtered his sacrifice, let him slaughter it in the name of Allah. It was narrated from Al-Aswad bin Qais with this chain of narrators. And he said, In the name of Allah, like the hadith of Abdul Ahwas. It was narrated from Al-Aswad that he heard Jundab al-Bajali say, I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, pray on the day of Eid al-Adha. Then he delivered the khutbah and said, Whoever offered his sacrifice before praying, let him offer another in its stead. And whoever has not offered the sacrifice, let him slaughter it in the name of Allah. Shubha narrated a similar report as hadith number 5067 with this chain of narrators. It was narrated that Al-Bara said, My maternal uncle Abu Burda offered his sacrifice before the prayer and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, That is just a sheep for meat. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I have a jada, goat. He said, Offer it as a sacrifice, but that will not suffice for anyone but you. Then he said, Whoever offered the sacrifice before the prayer has only slaughtered it for himself, but whoever offers the sacrifice after the prayer has completed his rituals and done it according to the sunnah of the Muslims. Footnote Regarding jada, its mention preceded in the Book of Zakat. It is a term that refers to a particular age among cattle. For goats, it refers to what entered its second year. For cows, what completed the third. For camels, what entered its fifth year. And in the case of sheep, according to the majority, it is what completed a year. And it is also said that it is less than that. Then they deferred. So some said six months, others said eight, others ten. See Minat al-Munim. It was narrated from Al-Bara bin Azib that his maternal uncle Abu Burda bin Niyar slaughtered his sacrifice before the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did. And he said, O Messenger of Allah, this is a day when meat is not desirable, to have longing for it and not to make use of it immediately. So I hastened to offer my sacrifice in order to feed my family and neighbors and household. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Repeat your sacrifice. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I have a weanling female goat that is better than two sheep for meat. He said, It is the best of your sacrifice, but no jada will suffice for anyone after you. Footnote regarding statement, O Messenger of Allah, this is a day when meat is not desirable, to have longing for it, and not to make use of it immediately. So I hasten to offer my sacrifice in order to feed my family and neighbors and household. He means that people see so much of it that day. It was narrated that Al-Bara bin Azib said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, addressed us on the day of sacrifice and said, No one should offer the sacrifice until we have prayed. My maternal uncle said, O Messenger of Allah, This is a day when meat is not desirable, to have longing for it and not to make use of it immediately. And he narrated a hadith, like that of Hushayim, hadith number 5070. It was narrated that Al-Bara said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever prays as we do, faces the same qibla as we do, and offers the same sacrifice as we do, let him not slaughter his sacrifice until he has prayed. My maternal uncle said, O Messenger of Allah, I have offered a sacrifice on behalf of a son of mine. He said, That is something that you have hastened to do for your family. He said, I have a sheep that is better than two other sheep. He said, Sacrifice it, for it is the better of the two. 
It was narrated that Al-Bara bin Azib said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The first thing with which we begin on this day, the day of Eid of ours, is the prayer. We pray, then we go back and offer the sacrifice. Whoever does that has attained our sunnah, and whoever has already slaughtered the sacrificial animal, that is just meat that he has given to his family, and there is nothing of the sacrifice in it. Abu Barda bin Niyar had already slaughtered his sacrificial animal, and he said, I have a jada that is better than a masinna. He, peace be upon him, said, Slaughter it, but it will not suffice for anyone else after you. Footnote regarding statement, I have a jada that is better than a masinna. This has also proceeded in the book of Zakat. It is that whose second set of teeth have come in. And in the case of sheep, it is the second year. See Minat al-Munim. A similar report, as hadith number 5073, was narrated from Al-Bara bin Azib from the Prophet peace be upon him. It was narrated that Al-Bara bin Azib said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him addressed us on the day of sacrifice, after the prayer. Then he mentioned a similar hadith as hadith number 5073. Al-Bara bin Azib narrated, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, addressed us on the day of sacrifice and said, No one should offer the sacrifice until he has prayed. A man said, I have a weanling female goat that is better than two sheep for meat. He said, Sacrifice it, but no jada will suffice for anyone after you. It was narrated that Al-Bara bin Azib said, Abu Burda slaughtered his sacrificial animal before the prayer, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Offer something else in its stead. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I do not have anything but a jada. Shuba said, and I think he said, Which is better than a masinna? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Offer it in its stead, but it will not suffice for anyone after you. Shuba narrated it with this chain of narrators, a hadith similar to hadith number 5077, but he did not mention the doubt about whether he said, it is better than a masinna. It was narrated that Anas said, the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said on the day of sacrifice, whoever slaughtered his sacrificial animal before the prayer, let him repeat it. A man stood up and said, O messenger of Allah, this is a day on which people want meat, and he mentioned the need of his neighbor, as if the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, agreed with him, and I have a jada that is dearer to me than two sheep for meat. Can I slaughter it as a sacrifice? He granted him a concession, allowing him to do that. He, the narrator, said, I do not know whether that concession applied to others or not. He said, Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, turned towards two rams and slaughtered them and the people turned towards some sheep and distributed, or he said, divided them. It was narrated from Anas bin Malik that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prayed, then delivered the khutbah, and he ordered those who had slaughtered their sacrificial animals before the prayer to repeat the sacrifice. Then he mentioned a hadith, like that of Ibn Ulayya, as hadith number 5079. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, addressed us on the day of Eid al-Adha, and he noticed the smell of meat. He forbade them to slaughter the sacrifice and said, Whoever has already offered the sacrifice, let him repeat it. Then he mentioned a similar hadith. Chapter on the Age of Sacrificial Animals It was narrated that Jabir said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, do not slaughter anything but masanna, unless it is too difficult for you, in which case slaughter a jada. Jabir bin Abdullah said, The Prophet peace be upon him led us in prayer on the day of Nahr in al Madina, and some men went and offered their Nahr, thinking that the Prophet peace be upon him had offered his Nahr. The Prophet peace be upon him ordered those who had offered their Nahr before him to repeat it with another Nahr, and not to offer their Nahr, until the Prophet, peace be upon him, had done so. It was narrated from Uqba bin Amr that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave him some sheep to distribute among his companions as sacrifices, and there a young goat remained. He mentioned it to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, 
sacrifice it yourself. It was narrated that Uqba bin Amr al-Juhani said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, distributed some sacrificial animals among us, and I got a jada. I said, O Messenger of Allah, I have got a jada. He said, Sacrifice it. Uqba bin Amr narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, distributed some sacrificial animals among his companions. A similar report as Hadith number 5085. Chapter on it is recommended to select a good animal for the sacrifice and to slaughter it oneself, not delegating it to anyone else, and to say the name of Allah and to say the takbir. It was narrated that Enes said, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sacrificed two horned black and white rams. He slaughtered them with his own hand and said the name of Allah and said the takbir, and he placed his foot on their sides. It was narrated that Enes said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sacrificed two horned black and white rams. I saw him slaughter them with his own hand, and I saw him placing his foot on their sides, and he said the name of Allah, and he said the takbir. Shuba narrated, Qatada informed me, I heard Anas say, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sacrificed. A similar report as Hadith number 5088. He said, I, the sub-narrator, said, Did you hear it from Anas? He said, Yes. A similar report as Hadith number 5088 was narrated from Anas, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, except that he said, And he, Peace be upon him said, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. In the name of Allah, Allah is most great. It was narrated from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, ordered that a horned ram with black legs, a black belly, and black around its eyes be brought for him to sacrifice it. He said to Aisha, Bring me the knife. Then he said, Sharpen it on a stone. She did that, then he took it, and he took the ram and made it lie down. Then he slaughtered it and said, In the name of Allah, O Allah, accept it from Muhammad, and the family of Muhammad, and from the Ummah of Muhammad. Then he sacrificed it. Chapter on the permissibility of slaughtering with anything that makes the blood flow, except teeth and all other bones. It was narrated from Rafi'a bin Khadij, I said, O Messenger of Allah, we are going to meet the enemy tomorrow, and we do not have any knives. He, peace be upon him, said, Slaughter quickly with whatever makes the blood flow, and mention the name of Allah, and eat, but do not use teeth and nails. I will explain to you. As for teeth, they are bones, and as for nails, they are the knives of the Abyssinians. We acquired some camels and sheep, and one of the camels went out of control, and a man shot it with an arrow and brought it under control. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, These camels have the inclination to behave in a wild manner. If one of them overwhelms you, do the same thing. It was narrated that Rafi'a bin Khadij said, We were with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, at Dhul Hulayfa, in Tihama, and we acquired some sheep and camels. The people rushed and slaughtered these animals and started cooking them in pots. But he, peace be upon him, ordered that they be overturned. Then he made ten sheep equivalent to one camel. And he mentioned the rest of the hadith like the hadith of Yahya bin Sa'id as hadith number 5092. It was narrated from Aba'iya bin Rifa' bin Rafi' bin Khadij that his grandfather said, We said, O Messenger of Allah, we are going to meet the enemy tomorrow, and we do not have any knives, so can we use a piece of reed for slaughtering? He mentioned the same narration as Hadith number 5092, and he said, One of those camels went wild, and we shot it with arrows until we made it fall down. It was narrated from Sa'id bin Masruq with this chain of narrators, the same Hadith as Hadith number 5092, until the end. And he said in it, We do not have any knives with us, so can we slaughter with reeds? It was narrated from Rafi'a bin Khadij that he said, O Messenger of Allah, we are going to meet the enemy tomorrow, and we do not have any knives. And he quoted the same hadith 
as Hadith number 5093, but he did not mention the words. The people rushed and slaughtered these animals and started cooking them in pots, but he ordered that they be overturned, but he mentioned the rest of the story. Chapter on the Prohibition of Eating Sacrificial Meat for More Than Three Days, which applied at the beginning of Islam, but was then abrogated, and now it is permissible to eat it as long as one wants. It was narrated that Abu Ubaid said, I attended Eid with Ali bin Abi Talib and he started with the prayer before the khutbah. He said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade us to eat the meat of our sacrifices after three days. Abu Ubaid, the freed slave of Ibn Azhar, narrated that he attended Eid with Omar bin al-Khattab. He said, Then I prayed with Ali bin Abi Talib and he led us in prayer before the khutbah. Then he addressed the people. He said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade you to eat the meat of your sacrifices for more than three days. So do not eat it. A similar report, as hadith number 5098 was narrated from Az-Zuhri with this chain of narrators. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No one should eat from the meat of the sacrifice for more than three days. A hadith like that of Al-Layth as hadith number 5100 was narrated from Ibn Umar, from the Prophet peace be upon him. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him forbade eating the sacrificial meat after three days. Salim, a narrator, said, Ibn Umar would not to eat the sacrificial meat for more than three days. Ibn Abi Umar said, after three days. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Abi Bakr that Abdullah bin Waqid said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, forbade eating the sacrificial meat after three days. Abdullah bin Abi Bakr said, I mentioned that to Amra, and she said, He spoke the truth. I heard Aisha say, The poor among the people of the desert came to the towns during Eid al-Adha, seeking help during the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Keep enough for three days, then give what is left in charity. After that, they said, O Messenger of Allah, the people are making skins with the hides of their sacrifices, and they are putting the fat into them. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Why is that? They said, You forbade eating the meat of the sacrificial animals after three days. He said, I only forbade you because of the poor people who came seeking help. Now eat in store and give in charity. It was narrated from Jabr that in the beginning the Prophet peace be upon him forbade eating the sacrificial meat after three days. Then after that he said, eat, store for the journey, and save. Jabr bin Abdullah said, we not eat the sacrificial meat for more than three days in Mina. Then the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him granted us a concession and said, eat and store for the journey. I said to Ata, did Jabr say until we came to al Madina? He said, yes. It was narrated that Jabir bin Abdullah said, We would not keep the sacrificial meat for more than three days. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, ordered us to store some of it for the journey and to eat from it, that is, for more than three days. It was narrated that Jabir said, We used to take it as provisions on the journey to al Madina at the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. It was narrated that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O people of al Madina, do not eat the sacrificial meat for more than three. Ibn al-Muthanna said, Three days. They complained to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, that they had children and servants. And he said, Eat, give to others, and save, and store it. It was narrated from Salama bin al-Aqwa that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever among you offers a sacrifice, nothing of it should be left in his house after the third day. The following year they said, O Messenger of Allah, shall we do what we did last year? He said, No, that was a year when people were hard-pressed, and I wanted the meat to be distributed among them. It was narrated that Thauban said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, slaughtered his sacrifice. Then he said, O Thauban, prepare this meat for us and he kept giving it to him to eat until he came to al Madina. It was narrated from Muawiyah bin Saleh 
with this chain of narrators, a hadith similar to hadith number 5110. It was narrated that Thauban, the freed slave of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to me, during the farewell pilgrimage, Prepare this meat. So I prepared it, and he continued to eat from it, until he reached al Madina. Yahya bin Hamza narrated with this chain, a hadith similar to hadith number 5112, but he did not say during the farewell pilgrimage. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Buraida that his father said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, I forbade you to visit the graves, but now visit them. And I forbade you to eat the sacrificial meat for more than three days, but now keep it as long as you see fit. And I forbade you to drink nabid, unless it was in skins, but now drink it from any kind of vessel, but do not drink any intoxicant. It was narrated from Ibn Abu Raida, narrating his father, that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, I used to forbid you. And he mentioned a hadith like that of Abu Sinan as hadith number 5114. Chapter on Fara and Atira. Footnote Fara and Atira are two types of sacrifices performed before Islam. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, There is no Fara and no Atira. Ibn al Rafi added in his report, Fara refers to the firstborn, which they used to sacrifice. Chapter on When the First Ten Days of Dhul Hijjah begin. It is forbidden for the one who wants to offer a sacrifice to remove anything from his hair, nails. It was narrated from Umm Salama that the Prophet peace be upon him said, When the ten days of Dhul Hijjah begin and one of you wants to offer a sacrifice, let nothing touch his hair or skin. It was said to Sufyan, a sub-narrator, Some of them do not attribute it to the Prophet peace be upon him. He said, But I attribute it to him. It was narrated from Umm Salama, attributing it to the Prophet peace be upon him. When the first ten days begin, if he has a sacrificial animal that he wants to offer as a sacrifice, let him not remove anything from his hair or trim his nails. It was narrated from Sa'id bin al-Musayyib from Umm Salama that the Prophet peace be upon him said, When you see the crescent moon of Dhul Hijjah and one of you wants to offer a sacrifice, let him leave his hair and nails alone. A similar report as hadith number 5119 was narrated from Umar or Amr bin Muslim with this chain of narrators. It was narrated that Umar bin Muslim bin Umara bin Uqayma al-Laysi said, I heard Sa'id bin al-Musayyib say, I heard Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him say, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, whoever has an animal to sacrifice, when the crescent moon of Dhul Hijjah appears, let him not remove anything from his hair or nails until he has offered his sacrifice. Amr bin Muslim bin Umar al Layfi said, We were in the bathhouse just before Eid al Adha, and some people removed their pubic hair using a depilatory agent. Some of the people in the bathhouse said, Sa'id bin al Musayyab regards this as maqru, or he forbids it. I met Sa'id bin al Musayyab and told him about that. And he said, O son of my brother, this is a hadith which has been caused to be forgotten and abandoned, which Umm Salama narrated to me from the Prophet peace be upon him. She said, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, a hadith like that of Mu'adh from Muhammad bin Amr. It was narrated from Umar bin Muslim al-Jundai that Ibn al-Musayyib told him that Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him, told him, a hadith like theirs as hadith number 5112, chapter on the prohibition of slaughtering a sacrifice for anything other than Allah, and the one who does that is cursed. Abu At-Tufail Amr bin Wa'tila said, I was with Ali bin Abi Talib when a man came to him and said, What did the Prophet peace be upon him tell you in secret? He got angry and said, The Prophet peace be upon him did not tell me anything in secret that he hid from the people, but he told me four things. He said, What are they? O Amirul Mu'mineen. He said, He, peace be upon him, said, May Allah curse the one who curses his father. May Allah curse the one who offers a sacrifice to anything other than Allah. May Allah curse the one who gives refugee to a muhaddith. And may Allah curse the one who changes the boundary markers. Footnote Muhaddith. And it may be read Muhaddith. 
The first is more popular, as it appears in our text, and it refers to one who aids or harbors the criminal. The meaning of muhaddat is the innovated thing itself, for which giving refugee would mean accepting and abiding by it. See Minat al-Munim. It was narrated that Abu At-Tufail said, We said to Ali bin Abi Talib, Tell us of something that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, told you in secret. He said, He did not tell me anything in secret that he concealed from the people. But I heard him say, May Allah curse the one who offers a sacrifice to something other than Allah. May Allah curse the one who gives refugee to a muhaddith. May Allah curse the one who curses his parents. And may Allah curse the one who changes the boundary markers. It was narrated that Abu At-Tufail said, Ali bin Abi Talib was asked, Did the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, tell you anything that was for you only? He said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did not tell us anything that was for us only, that he did not tell all the people, except that which is in this sheath of my sword. He took out a document on which it was written, May Allah curse the one who offers a sacrifice to anything other than Allah. May Allah curse the one who steals the boundary markers. May Allah curse the one who curses his parents. May Allah curse the one who gives refugee to a muhaddith.